I have these cages on my front fork and they're perfect for holding things like a water bottle or a little jacket. But I want to attach a tent and a dry bag. This is a two person tent and yeah, it might fit this way. Well, that's not aerodynamic. I just want to make a new cage that doesn't have this tight radius. I want the bags to sit like this, eh, maybe a little bit lower. And I want to make sure that I can still get to the screw to remove my front axle. My dry bag and my tent are roughly the same size and shape. This is the Nemo two person tent and this is a five liter dry bag. So I'm going to turn this flat sheet of plastic into a cage by rolling up the two sides and the bottom and we'll see how that works out. The piece of ABS plastic is 14 by 14 inches, so I imported that into Carbide Create, and I drew this shape of what I wanted the final cutout to look like. This orange rectangle is the size of my tent, and this rectangle is the shape of the aluminum backing plate that's going to attach using these rivet holes, and this bracket is going to be the backing plate that goes behind the fork to clamp everything together. This is the tool path for all the through hole cuts, and this is the cutout for the part, and just a quick 3D simulation showing the tool path. I didn't do a good job holding the material down. I was just relying on these clamps on the corners and the material so thin that it kept lifting up when it was cutting. Here's an example of what I was talking about. Conveniently, as these squares were cut out, they'd get sucked up by my vacuum. Anyway, here's the plastic cut out. Now I'm going to use this heat gun set to around 400 degrees to try and melt the plastic so I can bend the corners. As I'm heating it, you can see the plastic start to curl and sag. You can see it's starting to droop a little bit, so I think we're getting close. Let's see how we do here. Here I'm using compressed air to cool the plastic so the shape gets locked in. Well, I'm quite happy with how it turned out. This is pretty much exactly what I wanted, and the fit seems to be spot on. The plan is to grab the back side of the fork so we can prevent this from happening. If we grab onto that bolt on the back, that'll prevent the wiggles. I wanted the plastic cage to attach using metal brackets. So that's how it'll attach to the fork. I used my calipers to mark the hole spacing of 1.75 inches, using a center punch to punch the hole, a pilot drill to drill pilot hole. I have more drills than I know what to do with, so I just keep different size bits and deburr tools in various different drills. Makes quick work being able to swap tool to tool. I'm using this piece of item extrusion as a spacer to match the thickness of the fork. Uh, it's a little bit overkill, but it's what I happen to have laying around. Doing a trial fit here to see if I have my spacing right. And it fits beautifully. And even with no fasteners installed, it feels pretty solid. There's no wiggle. 
I'm using this centering drill bit to match drill the holes in the plastic into the aluminum backing plate. Skipping ahead, I drilled out the holes to match the large size rivets that I'm using and installing all the rivets. This is what all the pieces look like so far. That one bracket on the bottom with two holes looks really ugly, uh, so I'm going to design a fixture to hold it, and I'm going to machine it down to be a little bit smaller and lighter. I'll just speed through the process of how I drew it. Carbide creates a little bit different than other drawing programs. It's more like paintbrush, which makes it easier for people like me that don't do mechanical drawings very often. I have a scrap piece of plastic installed in the CNC, and first thing I'm going to do is drill two holes and tap them to hold the aluminum part that I'm going to machine. I have Tap Magic. It's a aluminum machining fluid in this squeeze bottle with a little needle on it. And it works great for getting the fluid right near the cutter. When I finally cut the part free, I don't want the outer ring going flying, so I left a little tab there that is a breakaway tab. I'll clean off those tabs with a little deburring tool and use a scotch Bright pad to kind of polish the part. This looks way nicer than it did before. At some point I'll probably paint it black. The plastic cage weighs about 160 grams. Adding the backing plate adds another 50 and adding the bracket that grabs the inner threaded hole on the fork adds about another 40 grams. So here's the completed cage. Super happy with how it came out. I can run straps horizontal and as well as vertical. The dry bag and my tent slip in perfectly. So we're gonna try and install it now. This goes in the front. And even with no bolts on there, it feels pretty solid. Here's everything installed on the bike, finally. The plastic cage is made of 8th inch ABS plastic, and it's riveted to an aluminum backing plate, so it's super rigid. It attaches to the fork in three places, and those three bolts triangulate to make it more moment resisting than other racks that have three bolts that are in line with each other. I made sure to deburr all the edges where straps might be going through so that they don't get cut. And on the other side I have my 5 liter Cedar Summit dry bag. There you go. These only stick out about 3 inches. And they're super durable. There's no flex in this at all. And I made room to make sure I can still get the skewer out without removing the rack. The goal of this project was to create a lighter option compared to a front rack with dual panniers. I normally travel with the tent and this dry bag in my rear pannier, but this gives me the flexibility to shift things to the front of the bike to even the weight distribution or to make room in the rear pannier for a backpack or some groceries. When folded up, these dry bags take up hardly any space compared to an Ortlieb pannier, for example. Comparing these to the Versa cages that I had prior, I can hold about twice the volume with these cages and they're about the same weight. Because this rack uses three points of attachment that create a triangle, it's much better at moment resisting compared to other cages that use three points, but they're all in a straight line. Since these cages are tall, flat, and rectangular, the cargo you're carrying doesn't stick out as far. For example, the tent only sticks out about three inches, where the Versa cage bags are about five or six inches in diameter. Having a smaller frontal area just makes the bike more aerodynamic. Here's a relative size comparison between the Versa cage and my cage. There's also provisions for a vertical strap, which help constrain your cargo even more. 
If you have any suggestions for improvement or any comments, feel free to leave them below. Thanks.